Want to know how I improved my paintings with just four lines? I'm sharing one of my favorite strategies today for making stronger compositions, and that's called the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is one of the most powerful tools that we've got to make strong, dynamic, compelling compositions with definite focal points. Focal points that pull the viewer in and hold their attention. But I want you to remember, as we talk about it, that it's a guideline, not a law. This is a photograph I took this past early spring, late winter. I snapped really quickly because I was hiking. So like a lot of compositions or photographs that you snap quickly, the composition is not optimal. I would not paint it as the photograph stands now. It's not edited at all. The default spot that a lot of people put the focal point when they start editing photographs or creating their compositions is in a spot that's not the best place. It, they tend to put it right in the middle, what I call the crosshairs. If the focal point is lining right up with the horizontal center and the vertical center, the focal point is literally at the intersection of those two lines. That's a really strong spot in the sense that it holds the viewer's attention. It tends to not let them go. So their eye tends to not travel around the rest of the composition. That's not optimal. The center is the least dynamic place to focus the viewer's attention. Centralized compositions can be made dynamic, but it's twice as hard. And here's why. Human perception is drawn to things that have difference and contrast. So we want to capitalize on that as we create more compelling compositions. When you put the focal point in the center, the composition tends to be divided in half. So we have a top and a bottom and a left and a right. This one is a little less even than a lot of the others, but you you really are creating fairly even equal divisions that just are not as visually stimulating. But there's a way to divide that picture plane that's really going to capitalize more on human perception. So let's look first at where the leading lines converge in this photograph because that's going to create the focal point. It's right here where that palmetto tree's trunk is beginning to move into the grass of the marsh. You can see the lines slightly diagonal that are implied by the directions of the foliage and the changing grass heights in the marsh all point the viewer's eye to that spot. It's just that spot's not the best place, the most optimal place, for the focal point. But we're going to capitalize on the rule of thirds and create a more dynamic focal point. So let's dive on in. We're going to use four simple lines to organize the focal point and composition to make it a whole lot more compelling. How do you do it? You use divide the composition into thirds for both horizontally and vertically. This gives us nine equal spaces in the composition. Where those lines intersect becomes a really strong place to put the focal point. I want you to notice as we're looking at this in my original photograph that that place that I identified as being the focal point it's not hitting on one of those intersections. We want to move it so that it's hitting on where one of these lines is intersecting to create a point. So that means I need to crop my photo first. I need to make it bigger or smaller so that the focal point hits on one of those lines. So that is how I am going to create a stronger focal point, is I am going to blow the photograph up so that focal point is now hitting on the intersection 
of a horizontal and a vertical line in here. So in scaling it up, I am looking for making it large enough that I can move that tree line or the tree intersection to an intersection of a vertical or horizontal line. Almost there. Now we're there. Then I can think about, do I want to position that intersection high or low? Either one will work. I want to create a composition that emphasizes the bigness of the sky on the coast. So I'm going to drop the horizon line down. But you can still create a dynamic composition by raising that horizon line, if that's what you desire. Either one will work. So now I'm going to move that down so that that spot is hitting on that one-third intersection. So right about there. So it doesn't have to be precisely on that line, but it needs to be right in this general zone. Let's turn off the vertical and horizontal lines now so that we can see how different that composition looks now. Here's the version cropped using the rule of thirds to create the focal point. Let's look at it square again so that you can see how much more dynamic it is when you use the rule of thirds. Lots more action and movement around the whole entire picture plane. If we look at the original photo, here it is. You can see here how much more visually interesting it is to create shapes that are not exactly alike. So we end up with a much more dynamic composition. Being fairly close to having that focal point on the intersection of a horizontal or vertical line, rule of thirds line, makes it much more compelling, much more dynamic, and a much more strong composition. It really creates more visual impact. The rule of thirds is not a new idea. It's been around a long time. It goes back to actually the 18th century and probably further back beyond that because in a lot of ways it's built out of the golden mean which was a Greek concept of ideal proportions. But back in the 18th century John Thomas Smith in his book Remarks on Rural Scenery developed the rule of thirds idea and while he's credited with coining the phrase the concept goes way way back. Even Joshua Reynolds talked about the importance of using thirds in composition. So I want you to test out the rule of thirds the next time you develop a composition and see what a difference it makes and making your compositions more dynamic and more compelling. I've got a free workshop right now that I'm hosting as an on-demand training. I'll share with you in that workshop how to leverage composition, what we've talked about today, along with value and color to make those compelling paintings. If you missed this earlier, now's your chance to grab a seat. You can learn more and find a time that works for you right here by clicking below or going to marygilkerson.com forward slash webinar. Happy painting, everyone. Look forward to seeing you again soon.